Well, contemporary jewelry is this portable art. You can interact with people and end up creating work that is alive. You can even create what you envision from recycled plastic, organic materials, resin, etc. And when Kodina came, we organized a series of activities related to his visit. And we never, ever thought that so many people would come. We booked a rather small room, which holds 50 to 60 people, but many more showed up. In fact, you could not see it here, but many people couldn't get in. There was also a motivation that there were, effectively, many of us who shared the same interest in working on contemporary jewelry. Working individually was much more complex. That's why it made sense for us to set up an association where we could do projects together that could not only imply the jewelry craft itself, but would also help us learn how to ultimately make meaningful contemporary jewelry. We really liked the analogy of our Hueca Brava, as that was what happened with our national dance, because there were two versions, on one side, the official one, but on the other, the more authentic one. It was also the first exhibition we made based on a topic designed for this new association. Having managed to exhibit in the Centro Cultural de la Moneda was a big achievement where we could show traditional arts that jewelry also had its place there. And then came several openings, plans and projects. With the materials I had, which were bones, I made a spine. The museum store invited us to exhibit our pieces in a very particular space, which was a kind of window facing the museum central hall. We gave each jeweler a random color to use in their pieces, as a painter would do. It was our eruption into an art space, and it was something strategic. We jumped from the museum store to the central hall of the most important art museum in Chile. Going to Europe meant in those times going to Germany. It was a wonderful mirror where all Europe looked in. And it was particularly important to be there. I think the relevance of this event lied on the number of resources we could gather. Before, we just had our own enthusiasm, but now we had important support and funds. A work of years, of about a year and a half or two, when we first defined what each of us wanted to propose. They prepared well because they are very driven and strong-willed, and the continent was wonderful. Something that really worried me was the fact that we were not only showing our jewelry, but we were also showing our country. People were overly impressed to see how these Chilean women worked so hard. They came from so far away, and they were not only the artists, but also in charge of their own shipping, setting up. We did everything. This part, in my opinion, an important landmark in our internationalization and how hard work, passion, and enthusiasm of working together helped us reach all of these places we have been able to go in all these years. A, a todos los lugares a los que pudimos llegar durante todo estos años en realidad. Well, once we went abroad, we realized we had to define what the Chilean identity really was. 
how we identified ourselves. Then we started researching about our history and came up with the Baroque concept. We decided that a percentage of the piece was going to be made with copper because we were going to show it in the fifth meeting of silversmiths and the first meeting of coppersmiths. So this piece had this duality, like pleasure on one side and pain on the other, which was what attracted me about this Baroque period. The evangelization of indigenous people happened through art as they were an alphabet. That's why paintings told stories like vignettes in a comic book. And this was associated to the roadside memorials that build the story of the deceased through these little houses, full of symbols. I see these memorials as an expression of pagan cult that remained through time until today. When I was invited to this exhibition about eroticism, I had found some handles, drawer handles, vintage handles. I was looking for a clear and direct erotic tension. First, I made a mold of my vagina with one idea in mind. But when I saw the result, I had a revelation and my work changed. My vagina looked too much like the image of the Virgin Mary. We realized that the common thread that we followed had to continue, so we started the tutorships. The goal was also to professionalize Hoya Brava. I mean, we all had different levels of expertise and dedicated different amount of time to the craft. So it was time to standardize our conditions, and that could be done with the help of an expert in the area. I also wanted them to realize, rethink, and remake what they thought jewelry was as a concept as an idea, but also how it made an object. How they could make a piece of jewelry and the idea of the body from a concept of transformation through mending. I had just had surgery, and I saw so many stitches in my body that I felt like mended. I remember how my mother mended holes in my mom's I think it was either fall or winter. There were many branches from trees on the ground, and I started collecting them and using them for my work, where I incorporated ceramic. Then I covered every trunk and branch I had with ceramic. And when I put the pieces together, I realized they had morphed into organs. I went through a whole process of exploration of different materials until I ended up working with the technique of horsehair microbasketry, which allowed me to get these volumes, these organic forms, these vessels. I focused on traditional medicine and more specifically, clothes, an ancient anesthetic substance. It made me think about the strong and important subject of how we live, anesthetize. I dehydrated organic materials such as garlic, oranges, lemons, and I mixed them all. They were all objects found or waste materials. I sewed together a lemon and a piece of mother of pearl. And this is the lemon ring that changed my way of making jewelry. My reflection came from the control and the abuse on the species that surrounded us, especially the ones we eat. That is why I decided to work with bones and the pieces that came out of making people think and cause a certain feeling of Rejection. It was a purpose of introspection, creation, understanding the materials during the work, not getting caught in preconceived ideas. 
In a process that took more than a year, and it was called, it ended up being called interiors, which had to do with the exploration of the world within us. It was interesting because we came with a new generation of grave jewelers joining the association, and it was the first project. Making a body and soul proposal in the shape of a piece of jewelry. And I collected vintage gloves that talk about femininity, the power of the elites. And I also collected worker gloves from men, from working hands. And I exhibit that dichotomy that two seemingly utilitarian objects can have. When I came back to my family's house, I found many things that were stored. Among them, some bed sheets made by the women in my family. I made these pieces from those sheets. I had been thinking about working with artificial flowers for a while. I did not know exactly why, but I was intrigued with how they could be used both as an offering in cemeteries and also as decoration in most popular domestic spaces. I feel that here is where the identity of many jewelers is forged, where to start to develop our own language, our own way of creating, and here is also where we start to feel that we are making contemporary jewelry. It is almost as if I was waiting for this to happen. And we forged ourselves too, with these tutorships. I think we have made our own school, and anyone who knew a little more shared this knowledge with the people who had less experience. And the fact that some of us have received awards and participated in important exhibitions makes us all immensely proud. What is happening now is that Hoya Brava is starting to build a language. Every one of its members is discovering her own language, where aesthetics, the beautiful or the ugly does not matter much. But you can understand the beauty within the weirdness.